Now, I understand that Ireland has its own nuclear deterrent. The name, Dominic Bean. During the war, I stood in a public house in London, and a very old established English gentleman approached me, and he said to me, he said, tell me, he said, tell me, tell me, tell me, he said, who do you think will win the war? I said, oh, you will. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you will. Oh, he said, jolly good show. He said, tell me, he said, why do you think so? I said, well, you nearly beat us. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a song to prove that we did win a battle on English ground. 1869 being the date of the year, those Waterloo sportsmen and more did appear to gain the great prizes and to bear them a war, never counting on Ireland and Master McGrath. On the 12th of December, that day of renown, McGrath and his keeper, they left in Lorgan town. A gale in the channel, it soon drove them o'er. On the 13th, they landed on England's fair shore. And when they arrived there in big London town, those great English sportsmen all gathered around. And one of them laughs with his scornful ho oh, ho, saying, Is that the great dog you call Master McGraw? And Lord Lurgan stepped forward, he said, Gentlemen, if there's any among you has money to spend, for you nobles of England, I don't care a straw. Here's five thousand to one upon Master McGrath. Now McGrath, he looked up, he wagged his old tail, informing his lordship, I know what you mean. Don't mind, noble Brownlow, don't fear the McGrath. I'll soon tarnish the laurels, says Master McGrath. And Rose is done and covered the great English bride. Her master and keeper were close by her side. They have let her away, and the crowd cries, Hurrah for the pride of all England, I am Master McGrath. As Rose and the master, they both run along. Now I wonder, said Rose, what took you from your home? You should have stayed there in your Irish domain. Never come to gain laurels on Albion's plain. Well, I know, said McGrath, we have wild heather bogs. But you'll find in our old Ireland there's good men and dogs. Lead on, bold Britannia, give none of your jaw. Shove that up your nostrils, says Master McGrath. <laughs> the hair went on with the wonderful view. And swift o'er the green fields of England he flew. Rose gave the first turning according to law, but the second was given by Master McGrath. The hare went on just as swift as the wind. He was sometimes before it and sometimes behind, but he jumped on her back and he held up his paw. Long live the Republic, says Master McGrath. In Spain, they caught their women with the guitars. In Ireland, they caught them with the tuning forks. <laughs> I'd like you to pick up the first verse of this song, which is the chorus throughout. On the banks of the roses, me love, and I sat down. And I took out me tune and fork to play me love a tune. In the middle of the tune, she sighed and she said, I know Johnny, lovely Johnny, would you let me? When I was a young girl, I heard me father say, he'd rather see me dead and buried in the clay. Much sooner than be married to any runaway by the lovely sweet banks of roses. On the banks of the roses, we love and I sat down. And I took out my tune and fork to play me love a tune. In the middle of the tune, she sighed and she said, I 
man, oh Johnny, lovely Johnny, would you let me? Then I am no runaway, and I'll soon let you know that I can take a good glass, or I can leave it go. And the man who doesn't like me leave his daughter at home, and young Johnny will go roving with another on the banks of the roses in love, and I sat down and they took out the children for to play in love as you. And when I do get married, it will be in the month of May, where the birds are all singing and the flowers are all gay, where me and me true love can sit and sport and play by the lovely sweet banks of the roses, on the banks of the roses, 